Time now for Sit Sarah. This is where I get 60 seconds to talk. Start the clock, please. Here's what's on my mind this morning. Spring training is underway, and it's not hard to figure out what kind of mood guys are in. Take Bo Bichette, for example. This is the Bo we're most familiar with. Flowing locks of hair, big bat, and occasionally bad defense. This spring training, Bichette had a bit of a different look when he arrived in Dunedin, Florida. Ponytail Bo showed up, ready for spring training ready to get the taste of last season's playoff disappointment out of his mouth. He's also ready to get the taste of a somewhat contentious contract negotiation with the Jays out of his mouth as well, settled on three years, around $33 million. It's all about growing up and moving forward and getting better. Said Bo, quote, you have to learn how to lose together before you can learn how to win, me included. It's a little bit of maturing as a professional and as a person, end quote. Sounds like Bichette did a lot of soul searching this offseason. He's a heart and soul player on this team. 2023 for Bo is going to be interesting. Very interesting. <coughs> Shai Davidi joining us live from Dunedin, Florida. I'll provide the sound effect, no problem. Shai, uh, we appreciate you. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, he, Bo Bichette, hands down, was one of the more intriguing players to me in this offseason for a lot of reasons for the Jays. What, what have you made of how he's arrived in camp? What are you seeing? Well, he's got lots of good reason to, to feel pretty happy because the Blue Jays and Bo Bichette were on a potentially dangerous road in terms of ending up in an arbitration hearing. And those can sometimes go sideways. You look at Milwaukee Brewers and Corbin Burns, who report to, reported to their camp yesterday, and he's saying that his arbitration hearing, that the relationship has changed and that it's really had an impact on the way he views the team, the way he feels that the team values him. And Bo Bichette and the Blue Jays, settled on that three-year deal you mentioned and Bobashek comes to camp feeling like the Blue Jays valued him they appreciated what he did what he does and sometimes that stuff really matters and you know the, the Blue Jays could have ended up in a hearing room they could have ended up saying things that would have damaged that relationship and instead of being in that type of situation they're in a situation where Bobashek feels even more motivated than he already does. Shy, obviously, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., long-term piece for this franchise. We don't know what the number is going to be in terms of the size of that deal, but Rodgers is going to have to pony up, no question about it. Alec Manoa has jumped the queue. He is a, he is a long-term piece, a core for this team. But I do find the conversation with Bo really interesting in that we know the talent that's there, especially at the plate late in the season last year. We saw it. But it's, it feels like with the fan base, and you can't always judge things by just the fan base, there is still a portion of the fan base that is thinking, you know what, he's really good, but if you told me we traded him for X, or you told me we traded him for Y, I wouldn't be mad at you if I thought it got us closer to where the Jays needed to be. How, what do you think of that overall philosophy on Bo? I think Bo Bichette is the type of player that if he wasn't here, you would realize just how talented he is. And what happens in baseball, because it's 162 games, it becomes really easy to pick out a player's For flaws. Sure. For sure. And you sometimes maybe don't fully appreciate his strengths. And Bo Bichette, I mean, the way he picked up that team in late August and September and literally carried it on his back to the playoffs, very few players can do that. And he had a bit of an up-and-down season. Uh, he obviously got off to a slow start, was chasing it a little bit. But the level of talent that he showed in August, August September, like, that's not a fluke. He can do that over an extended basis. You saw that in 2021. I expect we'll see it in 23 as well. And, you know, for a player who's really one of the top talents in the game, I feel sometimes he's maybe not appreciated quite the way he should be. Fair enough. And especially, look, if he looks a lot like he did late in the season consistently, Shia, like you're saying, that's the best contract in baseball for what the Jays got him. Like, that is outrageous, that number. We'll see how he does. Uh, the Blue Jays begin their spring training schedule, by the way, a week from tomorrow against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Shia DeVee, Sportsnet, follow him on Twitter. Shia, appreciate you, man. Have a good day. Nope. You too, bud. Take care. Take care. Shy and a lot of terrific baseball people for sports have been doing a lot of great work.